Let's please be seated. My sisters and brothers, I speak to you in the name of our loving and liberating and life-giving God. Amen. Trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. I learned that 50-something years ago. I wasn't the best scout that ever was. I was a really super-duper Weeblos. I loved Weeblos. We lived in Hawaii. When we went to, uh, to camp outs, we were on the beach, and it might dibble down into the 60s at night. And then we moved to Rome, Georgia, and they started hiking up into the Appalachian Trail, and it was cold and wet, and I didn't get a whole lot out of it. But I want you to know that the marks that are made on you in scouting, indeed the marks that are made on us as we are growing up, the marks that our parents help us to set our lives by, those stay with us. And as we celebrate this Scouting Sunday, we're celebrating the developmental aspect of the way in which God sees every one of us. We are all children of God. We are all somewhere walking on the path. And along that path, we are trying to find our way in God's law. Today we have two examples of that. In the teaching of Moses and of Jesus, the first reading, which Samuel read, is the last words of instruction that Moses gives his people in Torah, in the beloved law of God. All of Israel identifies itself through Torah, through the teaching of God's law. And those five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, are the description that Jesus would have known that described what religion and faith and following God looked like. Moses has led them for more than 40 years, and they began as an enslaved people. They didn't own anything. They were owned by Pharaoh. They didn't get paid for work. Their work increased the wealth of Pharaoh. They didn't even buy their own bread. It was given to them by Pharaoh. And so Moses spends time on a long camp out. Imagine 40 years of camp out where they're off in the wilderness and they're only fed by the manna that falls from heaven. And they're only guarded by the Ten Commandments which God gave Moses and they only worship at the temple, which is a tent. And it's set up every time they move for 40 years worth of going here and there. Moses is now an old man. The next chapter tells us he's 120 years old. He is worn out. And so he's giving the last words. And he says, there's basically a fundamental choice. You can choose death or you can choose life. You can choose the things that build people up or you can choose the things that tear people down. This is what God gave us. This is the free will that is ours. But Moses says, choose life. Choose that you may live. These are Moses' last words in that great book that Jesus would have known as Torah. And then Jesus comes before his people, and one of his first sermons is known as the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 5 through 7. We've been working our way through that here in the congregation. We had the Beatitudes a couple of weeks ago, and then the you are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. And today Jesus says something even more important. He enhances what the law of God looks like. He enhances what this choosing life looks like. He says it's not enough not just to not murder people. And we're pretty all well agreed that we don't want to go around murdering people. It runs a terrible society if murder is a continuous threat. Uh, and we don't want to run around lying to one another. And we don't want to run around breaking covenant with one another. But Jesus says it's not just that overt title. It's what goes on in your heart when you are trustworthy and loyal and helpful and friendly and courteous and kind and obedient and cheerful and brave and clean and reverent. It's what goes on within your heart that becomes the life-giving way. Now, I tell you all of that to set up what I really want to talk about today, because from time to time, when I read Holy Scripture, I see things that I have either forgotten or never known. It's a big Bible, you know? It's got 66 books. It has multiple authors written over a thousand years. And today, I just, or this week as I was studying, I found a passage I hadn't thought about for a long time. It's that psalm that Bob Rosecrans led us in, Psalm 119. 
Now, you might possibly know that Psalm 119 is the longest psalm in the entire Bible. It's the longest chapter in the Bible. It's 176 verses. And you might think, Father Mark, what difference does that make? 176 verses. Well, one clue is that Bob and we, we gathered together to read eight verses. And if you take the number eight and divide it, uh, and divide 176 by eight, you get 22. Okay, Mark, that's really sweet. Now you've got us to 22. What is 22? 22 is the number of letters in the Hebrew alphabet. You know, we got 26, but back then they hadn't invented a couple of letters. And so they only have 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet from Aleph and Beth and Gimel all the way to Tau. And it turns out that what this psalmist did when he was writing his psalm is that he wrote eight verses that began with A, with Aleph, and eight verses that began with B, with Beth. Maybe you remember the children's books that you had. A is for apple, and B is for bowl, and C is for cup. And you'd learn the alphabet by going through the various words. Well, the psalmist decided he was going to talk about God's law in such a way that you could see all of the aspects of it. See all of the different colors. Because we tend to think about law as law or breaking the law. Doing the right thing or doing the wrong thing. But the psalmist knows that there's more to it. And the way that we're shaped, just as we are shaped by the scout law, is to be again and again called into awareness. And so the part that we read today, every verse of those eight verses in Hebrew begins with the letter Aleph. And the next eight verses all begin with the letter Beth. But the, the constant within it all is he keeps thinking of synonyms, words that remind him of God's law. Happy are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are they who observe his decrees. Those are laws. But always walk in his ways. Now the law is a pathway. Like when you're hiking up old, old Rag or Grandfather Mountain, you have to follow on the pathway. You've laid down your commandments. We might keep your statutes. I regard all of your commandments and your righteous judgments. And I keep your statutes, do not forsake me. In other words, the psalmist was thinking about the way in which God kept him on the path, kept him going in the way that he should go. Friends, this is for all of us. Here in the parish, we're talking about two things that I think are very important. We're going to spend all of Lent and get re getting ready for Easter by talking about gratitude and compassion. It's possible for you to do your gratitude work alphabetically. When I get out on the Cross Island Trail and I'm kind of bored and I'm thinking about stuff, I think of all the things I'm grateful for that start with A, starting with avocados, but there are other things I'm also grateful for that start with A. And then I work into B and bacon immediately comes up and, and I'm working my way through and, and then corned beef and cabbage. And so you get how the pattern works. I, I'm a hungry guy. That's just all I am. I also can use it as my prayer list because my sister Amy always comes to mind and then Barbara, my sister-in-law. And as I work my way through the alphabet, my world enlarges. The frame of my gratitude enlarges because I see that there are people whose names begin with Z who mean something very much to me. And there are parts of my life that need to be reminded of how big God's world is. So that's the gratitude piece. It also helps with the compassion piece. Our world is hurting. If you turn on the news today, you will see the pain that the world is in. Turkey and Syria are grieving 28,000 deaths. Can you imagine what that would look like on Kent Island if 28,000 people were found under the rubble in one brief moment? That's not enough. In South Sudan, there's a war that's been going on for 12 years as Christians and pagans in the south part of Sudan fight over water resources. And of course, in our own cities and in our own rural areas, there's pain to be seen. And so using the alphabet or whatever methodology you can find to elbow out your compassion can allow you to know where God's heart is. We're not really telling God about things so much as we're being reminded of all the things that God carries on the divine heart. So scouts, 
Keep those words, trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. My guess is that one day I'm going to be in the nursing home with my walker and I'm going to go trustworthy, loyal, helpful. And I will be walking in the scout way. I will be walking in God's way. And friends, as you go about your gratitude, keep that alphabet in front of you. The psalmist did it. You can pull Psalm 119 out and read it. It takes a little while to get through 176 verses. But watch how he turns the diamond and talks about God's way, God's statutes, God's structures, God's instruction. Along the way, your world will grow larger both in your gratitude for what God does in your life and your compassion for those who need God in their lives today. Moses told his people to choose life. You need to keep that perspective of gratitude so you can choose life. Jesus said it's not just enough to check the boxes of I didn't kill anybody today. It's important not to murder them in your heart. And that will help you to help others with the compassion that you have. And along the way, with love of God and love of neighbor, we will become the people that God intended us to be all along. Amen.